Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the People's Choice Award for Inside, Outside, Upside Down. I'm Camila Tapia, the Community Engagement Assistant for the Phillips Collection. Tonight, we are joined by Simone Agusovier, the People's Choice winner for the exhibition, as well as Camille Brown, the Curatorial Assistant at the Phillips Collection. I will give a brief introduction for Simone and Camille, and then hand it off to them for a discussion. Afterwards, we'll have a brief Q&A, so if anyone has any questions throughout the webinar, please submit them throughout the Q&A function. Simone's evolution in portrait artistry has allowed her to explore using materials such as broken, crushed glass in her work. The use of this material has sharpened her craftsmanship, proving that she has a unique talent. She is highly creative with an insatiable thirst for growth and development in her artistic skill. Known for her creative depictions of people, Simone blends her traditional skill in portraiture with fresh, new, and unconventional techniques transforming her from a realistic fine artist to more of a contemporary artist. Over the course of her artistic career, and even in her youth, Simone has been awarded in fairs, competitions, and ceremonies for her artistic ability and talent as reflected in her artwork. Her longtime passion for art has led her to pursue a bachelor's degree in fine arts at the Art Institute of Washington, which she completed in 2011. Camille Brown is the curatorial assistant at the Phillips Collection. She's originally from New Orleans, Louisiana, where she received her BA in history from Loyola University of New Orleans. Camille graduated with her master's degree in museum studies from NYU. All right, Simone and Camille, take it away. Thank you, Camila. So Simone, I know you have a slideshow. Maybe we can dive into that. All right, sounds good. Let me share my screen. So this is the, um, so I, with the style show presentation, um, we decided to start with some of my earlier works and um, finishing off um, some more recent pieces. So I've always created art since a very young age. I, I knew I wanted to be an artist since I was in the third grade, um, but more recently um, with my, where I've been painting now, I started painting again back in 2017. As um, she mentioned, I graduated from the Art Institute of Washington, but I majored in graphic design. So for about 10 years, I was not painting and um, just started picking it back up in 2017. So this is one of the first pieces um, that I created during that year. And this is a portrait of my mother and my father. And it was a gift that I did for their anniversary. It was their 20, uh, I believe their 25, 25th anniversary. So then moving on. Um, from that style, um, when I started painting again in 2017, um, painting, I come from a background of drawing and sketching. So when I got back into painting, I was kind of timid. So I didn't want to kind of like go all in. And I do love a realistic type of finish, but you know, I was intimidated by the paints and it had been so long since I painted. So that's why I use a lot of color and kind of like an abstract feel when creating the, um, the pieces. So again, I was like exploring different styles and different ways to use the paint and just trying to get comfortable with the paint again. So this is another um, piece that's in that similar style. Um, I was inspired by an artist named Baca that kind of um, creates in the same similar style as well, as far as like um, he calls it spontaneous realism, um, and I felt like that really kind of fits this type of style of art because it's not, you know, real realistic, but you can see, you can still see the features of the people. So this is a painting that I did of Rihanna, um, again, just trying to find my style and what I like and just getting more comfortable with the paints. Um, 
Um, so I started to dive into more exploration with art and just trying to see how I can like do something more um, and just beautify my artwork. Um, when I started painting again, it was solely for the purpose of pleasure because I just love creating artwork. I love painting. I love drawing. It was like a sense of um, peace for me in a way that I can communicate how I feel and also a way to kind of like self-discover who I am, um, which is one of the reasons why I dove back into painting um, in 2017 after such a long time of not painting. So here you're looking at a piece I did of um, a, a celebrity who is a singer. Her name is Kay Michelle, and this was done with acrylic and broken glass and resin. So this is the first piece I did exploring this new material, um, broken glass. And um, moving on, it's, it's funny because I actually um, show, posted this piece and K. Michelle, the, the celebrity, she saw it and she wanted it immediately. So she actually owns this piece in her home. This is the second piece I did um, with broken glass. As you can see, um, this is a painting of Aaliyah. And this one is probably one of the biggest pieces that I had did to date at that time. It was six feet and six feet tall and four feet wide. And this was also done with acrylic and broken glass. Um, and I'm I'm a really um type of girl of like go big or go home. And, you know, once I did that first piece, the, the first previous piece of K. Michelle, that was like a 16 by 20, kind of like the smallest size that I would ever work with, because I do not like painting small, like with a passion. I just, I just, I just feel like I don't have enough room to like really get into it, because <laughs> by the time I start draw, drawing it out, like the eyes are already taking over the whole canvas. So I like to paint really big. Um, so this piece is larger than life. Um, and again, my only my second time using this material, this broken glass. And, you know, I learned a lot, but the piece came out beautiful. And I just feel like, you know, as an artist, you can kind of like create anything out of anything and um, be successful with this. So I was really pleased how this turned out. And from this point, I just continued to create using and incorporating that glass material in a lot of my pieces. So then we go into oil paints. Again, during this whole phase, I'm really doing um, like self-discovery and just exploring the different materials and what it is that I like to do. Um, and coming from a drawing background, I know that um, with the acrylics, it was still really hard for me to kind of handle the acrylics how I wanted it to handle, how I wanted to handle them. They dry very quickly. And um, I don't know, I just felt frustrated with it um, by the time 2019 came around. And then I decided to play around with oil paint. So this is the first oil paint that I created. Because um, even when in school, grade school and college, you don't really get exposure to oil paints for a lot of different reasons. So this was really like my first time really trying oil paints totally, like totally new experience. And this was the piece that came about. And this is a brandy. Again, this was big, 36 by 48. I always just go big. That way I can see if I, you know, the mistakes that do come up, I can kind of see it. I feel like if I started off small, I wouldn't really be able to see and assess, but the bigger you go, the more motivation it is to make sure that it comes out clean. So then this was the second piece that I created with oil paints. I was so excited with how the branded piece came out. Like a lot of the times when I'm creating artwork, I surprise myself because I have no expectation. I'm literally just exploring and having fun. You know, I still am a graphic designer full time. So I'm, I'm just having fun and just, you know, using this as a way to kind of, you know, self-express how I feel and also to show appreciation to people that I, you know, I feel inspired by. I always paint people that inspire me, especially in the music industry. So this was the second piece I did in oil paints that I was uh, super excited about, the high contrast um, and um, things like that. And then also including the broken glass because I'm using all these new elements and I just want to 
combine them all. So this has the oil paints as well as the broken glass down towards the bottom of this piece, as well as the rings. So as you can see, I'm still exploring, I'm still having fun. Um, and now I started incorporating color into these broken glass pieces. Um, at first I was just doing black and white and then I started getting into the color and just using a lot of other different um, elements because this one is actually done with acrylic and glass um, and, and using the different pops of color. So this is a painting of Missy Elliott, again, another person that inspires me. And I just wanted to see how it would look to use color and if it was possible and also um, to still use that glass element and have it kind of shine through the glass and, and be reflective. So this piece again was surprising to me. Um, I posted on my social media outlets and was able to um, meet Missy and give this to her as well. So this was, and this was created at the beginning of COVID. It was January. Um, Missy Elliott had actually came to the DC area for a concert. So this was right before COVID broke out. And this is what inspired this piece, Reflection. I, this is actually the first piece I created. I feel like this is the first piece I created with the whole pandemic in mind. Um, and just realizing like how the whole world is being affected by one thing. Um, I just thought that, I still think that it's so, such a mind blowing um, situation that we are in because it's like, we all like, no, no matter where you're at in the world, we're all connected through this pandemic. So I really wanted to kind of capture and do something different because I'm always painting people, I'm always painting portraits, but I wanted to kind of represent everybody and um, decided to do a word map. And with this, this is also done with glass. The difference with this glass though, is that it's finely crushed glass. So it's, it's tiny, it's not as chunky as the previous ones. And again, it was my first time using um, glass in this manner and just like trying to see how to adhere it to the canvas. And then again, go big or go home because this piece was about five feet tall as well. Um, this is five feet, this is not 36 by 48, this is larger than that. So I was pleased on how that turned out as well. So this is another piece. Um, from that piece, I kind of wanted to focus on what I consider home um, and where my roots come from. Um, and this is called Land of Diamonds. This is also done with that finely crushed glass. Um, and I'm actually wearing a version of this painting on my shirt as well that kind of replicates this painting. And um, I just wanted to show the beauty and kind of like focus in on a country that I felt like was really touched to home. And even during the time where um, with the pandemic and how a lot of people were um, trying to use Africa as like a testing ground and, and all of that. So I really wanted to pull that out of the reflection map and just put a shine and a focus on the continent of Africa. Now, um, with that, I kind of dove a little bit deeper into my heritage. I often visit um, West Africa as much as possible. We typically will go every two years and um, stay with family and visit family and friends there. So from um, my last visit, this was something that I've always had in mind to create. And I was able to kind of really focus on that, that, that body of work that kind of would represent um, West Africa, and particularly where I go to visit is Togo and Ghana. So when I go there, one thing that really stands out to me is the color and the beauty of the people. Um, not only just with their skin, 
and their features, but also the clothing that they, you know, that they wear all over is, you know, all that is so colorful. So that's something that I really wanted to depict, but also creating these pieces during the pandemic that also had an impact on my art. Um, I remember when I first was painting this, this piece and I was creating the, the face and this face is just, I like kind of just made up a face. It's not somebody that I know, it's not a person that I've seen before. It's just a side profile of a woman. And I just wanted her skin to be as dark as possible. Um, and I started with the face and I knew that I wanted to have a head wrap as well. But then when it came to the background, of this piece, I was going back and forth on how to do the treatment for the background. Will I do um, one of the primary colors or will I do a shade of blue or should I just do like a gray? Like I was really going back and forth and um, actually like seeking out advice from family and friends of what they thought I should do. And a lot of them would always say, you know, do orange or make it pop and make it blue. You know, blue was a really popular color for um, 2020, but, um, despite everything, all the advice that I was giving, um, I decided to go with black. And people would say, why are you going to do black? Like, you're not going to be able to see her. Like, do you, are you sure you want to do black? And I just thought, yeah, I want to, I want to try black. I want to see how I can create this background and still make the differentiate between the subject in the background. And then I think too, because of the situation that we were in and living in a pandemic, and things seemingly to be so dark and dim, I felt like it would be a perfect piece to kind of like repre represent that in and having that background be black. But then as you can see, this piece is created with the broken glass as well. And just showing how things can kind of be disruptive and things can look like broken or have no hope, but then you can still find beauty within that. So this was the piece that kind of set the the standards for all the other pieces that I've been working on um these past every these past couple of years and this piece is called black beauty it's acrylic and glass on a wooden canvas so like I said, I just took that idea and I continued to build on it and really wanted to create a body of works that represented Black women in this space. So this one is called In Hell. One thing that I'm really fortunate in to have, um, as you saw the first piece, it was a, a portrait of my, my mother and my father. My father is a carpenter. So a lot of these wooden frames that I paint on, my father hand makes. So I'm able to really, um, cause like when working with glass um, and because I work so large, I found that the canvas would typically cave in and then also with the resin on top, like these pieces can get really heavy, really fast. So um, I switched over to wood and not only is wood ca wooden canvases um, less expensive than cotton canvases, it's more durable and lasts longer. And the fact that my father's a carpenter just made everything <laughs> much better. So I really went into a phase of just creating um, paintings of Black women. This is um, a, a friend of mine. Her name is Akila the Beauty. Her and the piece. And then I started to focus more so on the Black and white concept that I was creating and exploring that a little bit more and just trying to create more of an abstract type of feel within my art and not um, always having it be what it seems. And I started to try to cross out the eyes. So this is an oil paint um, and that is gold over the eyes, it's called golden eye. I thought that this, when I started transitioning into this type of style, um, one of the goals was to really make that those different blacks kind of stand out and be different from one another. 
So the black that I use for this piece is called, for the background, it's acrylic and it is supposed to be known as the words black is black, 2.0 black. And it's like a very dark black matte color um, and finish. And then on top of that, I use oil paints to create um, the figure on here. And I think like having that different use of like the, the matte acrylic against the oil paints really help it to stand out. And then with that, I kind of wanted to explore that a little bit more in my artistry and kind of just really see how I can make the figure stand out in this darkness and this sense of darkness. So then this is another piece, again, just exploring and focusing more on the figure. Um, if you notice in my earlier works, I typically like to focus on the face. I'm always focusing on the face. My favorite feature is the eyes. I just feel like the eyes tell everything. You can get everything else wrong, but the eyes are what makes a painting or makes or breaks a portrait painting. And um, I wanted to kind of get away from that. And that's why I continue to cross out and paint out the eyes in these pieces because again, these women don't have any identities. They're nobody that I know. Um, and just like trying to just create a painting that could mean more than just what meets the eye. So again, this is the same um, treatment with the 2.0 matte black background with the acrylic, the oil paints over top. I remember when I was painting this, I felt um, it was really kind of daring because I never painted. Um, something like this and um I just remember when I was painting it and my husband was like are you are you gonna um make it like a certain way um my husband he's from West Africa from Togo so it's very you have to be very careful <laughs> with um like paintings like this and I just felt like with the darkness of it all and the shadowing I felt like it worked and that he would accept it this is golden thoughts Okay, so this is a, another piece that was directly um, influenced by the pandemic and the social distancing. Um, and this is called Six Feet. This, the original painting is um, over three panels and it's about eight feet long. Because when I was painting it, I really wanted her breath to measure out to be six feet. So I remember taking my measuring tape again and again to measure out the six feet distance. But what you're looking at is the digital version of it that is actually an NF currently is an NFT on Open Seas and on Foundation. Um, and I can press play. So with the digital version, it has um, a message in the breath, it lasts about seven seconds. And you can see it says like BLM, can't breathe, hope, social distancing, a pandemic, Breonna Taylor. I believe um, like the Breonna Taylor situation really had an impact on me. And um, instead of just painting her, because I, I, you know, I paint portraits, I paint people all the time. I really wanted to kind of amplify what was being done and just how black women were in my opinion, being overlooked. And that, again, that is why I created these paintings on these back, black, black backgrounds so that you see, they seem like they are invisible, but the painting is so strong that it makes you stop and look and you can still see her. So that has been the constant thing within these last paintings. Um, and then with this NFT, this digital piece, you can find that message found in her breath. It has a lot of different um, secret words, peace, resilient, beauty. So there is a physical version of this as well as the digital NFT version. 
the physical painting does not have the um, secret message in it, only the NFT. And then let me see if I can go to the next slide. Okay. So this piece, um, my, my thing throughout all these pieces is, you know, you can still see her, you can still see me. And I just decided just to have a piece that really just threw that in your face. Um, my idea for this piece was slightly different before I went into it. Um, I, I originally had other ideas for it because of my travels back home to West Africa. I, I do um, collect a lot of fabric. So I wanted to kind of bring in that element that you saw with the broken glass pieces and the colorful head wraps and all of that. I wanted to bring that element into this piece, um, but in a more of a 3D form versus, versus just using paints to create the turban and the hair wraps, but to actually adhere the fabric to the piece on this black background. So where, when I started this piece, that was the idea. And um, if you look closely, you could see where her, her dress would have normally been placed. And that is where I was going to adhere the fabric to. But at the end of um, this piece, and you know, with paintings, you never know when you're actually finished a piece, so who knows? But um, when I was finished or I felt that I was done, I didn't feel the need to add the fabric that I had nearby to this piece. And I just thought, you know, I think it should, I should leave it like this. I just felt like having that emptiness there kind of helps the viewer to kind of create their own silhouette of what she what she's wearing and how she's feeling within this space. Again, creating these black figures on black backgrounds. So this background is a little bit different from the previous ones. This one is actually um, done with a high gloss acrylic paint versus the 2.0 matte black one and um, oil paints over top. The figure is done in oil paint. And um, just like seeing, again, exploring what that looked like and how it differs from the other pieces I did. And I really felt like the background, because it was like a semi-gloss paint and having that shine in the background, but the figure itself, it was still pretty matte because um, it's the oil paints with no finish. I just thought that it just made the figure pop out a little bit more on the background. So a lot of my um, newer works kind of like mimic this style. And this is a piece that is similar to the Beauty Mark piece. It's a painting of my sister. Um, and I believe she is number seven. I don't think I mentioned it earlier, but I am the second oldest of 12 children and my parents in the beginning, they had 12 children and she is number, actually I believe she's number eight. I'm number two. Um, and I just wanted the original, the beauty mark piece to kind of like have a friend and also, you know, painting my um, family members during this time. And she got a pet bird, but the bird, it's a, it's a long story <laughs> with the bird. She went through a phase of adopting a lot of animals during the pandemic. Um, started off with gerbils and hamsters to um, a bird to bunnies, um, but she just, just was not having a good time, <laughs> relationship with these animals. So this bird, her name is Blue in it. And she felt like the bird didn't like her. So she gave the bird to my brother to keep. And that is why the bird is kind of like, the bird is there, but it's really not there. And that's why they have like this disconnect. So she's still on the hunt of um, finding her perfect animal friend, her animal pet, but I thought that this one was good. And the bird, her name was Blue in it, which is the name of the piece. And lastly, this is Beauty Mark. Um, again, this is a painting of my sister. She is number seven. And um, just like seeing how they was going through the pandemic and, you know, everything was virtual. A lot of things still are virtual, but just not feeling that connection and never even being able to imagine that this is where we have come to be. Like nobody could have predicted that this was going to happen. This is how we was going to be living our life. 
being 16 years old, you would think that you would be at high school, um, going to the movies, hanging out, but instead you're just in this space trying to understand what's going on in the world and what hope there is for you, but knowing that you can still make an impact and that there is still a future and that this present moment is not going to last forever. And that is Beauty Mind. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, Simone, that was wonderful. And thank you for joining me tonight. You can go ahead and um, stop sharing. There we go. So um, thank you, that was, that was amazing. Um, I kind of want to begin by talking about Beauty Mark. So I think for me, what was so effective about your work wasn't just, you know, that visual, uh, that visual like monochromatic thing you had going on. It was also like the message that it conveyed about having to search for and finding beauty. Um, you know, you're also touching on this relationship with technology. She's holding an iPad. Um, I'm curious what led you to draw your sister and a follow-up is, were your other sisters mad that you didn't draw them or paint them? <laughs> I know. Um, so being the second oldest of 12 children, we I adopted children um, along the way. So mm -hmm. that number seven is um, a child that I claim as mine. And there's another, her name is Kyla. And there is a, another, there's a boy who name is Kalel. So I've adopted those two as my children. So that's why I kind of, <laughs> I painted my brother probably back in 2013, just randomly um, during that time. But yeah, I think that is a funny question. <laughs> but what led me to draw her was because um, during this pandemic, you know, a lot of us was able to spend more time with our family and kind of just, you know, we couldn't really go out and mingle with other people. You kind of had to mm -hmm. be with who you were already around. And I'm always, you know, around with my family all the time. So, you know, just seeing, and then seeing how the pandemic affected her, not only her, but all of my brothers and sisters and stuff. I just thought it was important to kind of capture that moment. Um, as an mm -hmm. artist, I just feel like that is the, our responsibility is to capture what's going on, especially something as historical as, a global pandemic mm. so that's what made me um drew me to draw her because I just felt like you know talking with her and just asking like how do you feel what do you think about this pandemic and you know being having to do zoom on school it was just like a lot of different emotions that I could see in her and maybe she couldn't even really express it you know being a teenager is hard and now we have this mm -hmm. pandemic so you know I had her pose and just do natural things that was natural to her and um, decided to go ahead with that pose that position that she that she was in and painted. I love that and I'm I'm curious did you um did you paint your sister did she sit for you or do you tend to paint from photographs or, no, or is it like a mixture? Yeah well it's definitely a mixture but yeah she sat for me um and it was fun we did like a quick like 10 minute sketches warm up so she would do different poses and you know I would do a 10 minute sketch and she had her practice <laughs> for being a model um and then afterwards we kind of like reviewed all the ones but when she does pose or any model because I you know I, I try to do this with any model that I'm able to have sit in front of me I'll take pictures too so that I can have that as a reference for later on when I go back to kind of like have details into the work and things like that but I definitely um like to paint from life because I just feel like you get a different effect versus just looking at a photograph the whole time like you can kind of get to know the person a little bit even though with my sisters like I know them but you know it's still different like we're like almost what 15 years apart mm -hmm. and you know I don't know everything about her but being able to sit in those moments you know you can kind of like gauge and learn a little bit more about each other her, me, and me, her. So I love to be able to have that in-person um, communication. Absolutely. And so I know Beauty Market's part of this newer body of work and, and the majority of the paintings in this collection are using that monochromatic palette. Um, I'm 
but you also showed examples of earlier work where there's like a lot of color that pick that um portrait of your parents that was beautiful using all of those colors how do you i'm curious about your relationship to color and how you decide when to use it and what's kind of steered you away from it in this um recent collection or series okay. i think that that's a, a great color i mean color <laughs> that's a great question um what i wanted to say is that black and white has always been my go-to um especially coming from that drawing background and just like drawing in grayscales like it's just always been my comfort level and when i started with the colorful like using all the different colors when I would paint um, those portraits, I would paint from a black and white photo and mm. um, try to just imagine what colors would be there and trying to, you know, warm up to using color in my painting. So um, using a black and white photo and like just thinking about the color wheel and like what kind of correlates to light versus the dark and the contrast and all that, that's, I kind of just it was spontaneous, kind of like how the name spontaneous realism for that type of style work was kind of coined by Vodka. Um, it's just something that you can kind of feel and see and just experiment with. So I was happy that whenever I did, they normally did come out looking, <laughs> looking good. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just something I feel like it's an intuition thing. And then after having fun and playing around with that, I just had to go back to my, what I love, which is black and white, like black and white are my favorite colors even though people like to argue that neither is a color in the absence of color but that's a whole nother series of paintings that I'm working on. I love that I'm excited to see those. Um, I'm curious what drew you to portraiture and if you can remember when the first time you connected with a portrait was and, and what who the artist was. Okay this is gonna be funny <laughs> um I've always been drawn to portrait um artistry and painting people I just think that people are so fascinated like from a young age like I knew I wanted to be an artist from the third grade when I was about seven or eight years old and like it's <laughs> to say it it just seems like I don't it just sounds interesting when I say this but the first portrait that I remember seeing is the portrait that I did of myself it was a painting that I did of myself. Again, this is the third grade, you all. So I I, I can't remember anything because that's the moment when I knew that I loved art and I wanted to be an artist. And it was a piece that I created, which was a self-portrait of me, but it was done in the Andy Warhol style. So I'm mm. assuming that my art teacher um, may have exposed us to his work and just told us to do something similar. Um, in like a in a print in a silk print type of style so I did myself and that piece won second place in the county fair and I was like oh I'm gonna be an artist and it was a portrait a self portrait of me and I've just always continued to do that throughout my whole artistry career so I would have to say I was the artist <laughs> <laughs> and it was a painting of me but That's if I had amazing. to guess, I would say Andy Warhol Marilyn um, Stitch Mm, I love that you were um, inspired by yourself. That's wonderful. And right. so but no, mentioned... I would have to give the credit to Andy Warhol for the Marilyn mm. Stitch piece because looking back at that piece, it it looks just like that, just as a portrait of myself. So, I mean, I'm speaking of Andy Warhol. You know, he created these like infamous celebrity portraits, and like you also sh like showed a number of your portraits of um of singers primarily. It seemed like, um, what drew you to these subjects? Um, yeah. So in the beginning, like again, I was just painting for fun and just enjoying the process and just learning what I liked and just communicating and music is like such a big part of my life. Um, I love listening to music like all the time. And those people that I painted were people that inspired me. Um, K. Michelle's like her music is just so versatile from R&B to um, hip hop to country. Like she does like so many different styles of music and she just always has been inspiring to me. So I painted her and then as well as Aaliyah is a classic and um, I just feel like her influence and her presence has never, 20 years later and she's still charting the charts to this day. 
So there, there's just people, um, and again, powerful women in the industry that are super creative. Missy Elliott, Missy, like there's nothing else to say. Like she's such a creative ball in herself. It's just like, mm -hmm. it's mind blowing to the creativity that kind of excludes from her. So I just always was attracted to people who were creative and not scared to do something different. And I was always attracted. Tony Braxton, that piece I did of her, like her, just her voice itself is just so distinct and unique. I remember growing, growing up and listening to her and always being so confused, like Tony, like who is this lady? Like, I just always remember being in such awe of her. So, you know, it's just artists that I just really looked up to and was really inspired by and impressed and kind of motivated me to not be afraid to be different and to try it all. So um, I'm curious to know a little bit more about the materials that you use. Um, you, I know that you work with acrylic paint and, and um, oil. I know that you work with glass. Um, what drew you to these materials? And you know, maybe more specifically, when did you first begin to work with glass? Can you speak a little bit more about what you what drew you to that? Yeah. So, um, I mean, acrylic. Starting with the acrylic, acrylic, I feel like it's so accessible. Like it's so easy to get acrylic. It's everywhere. Um, it's easy to work with, fast and dry, um, and then moving into oil paints. But when it specifically came to glass, um, I just remember seeing pieces that were done with glass and just wondering like, if that was something that I could actually do within my own art. Um, but glass isn't easy to find. Um, and sometimes you just got to break it yourself. And then just realizing how like so many things that we throw away or that we deem as broken or trash is just lying around us and being able to kind of use that and make something beautiful with it was kind of like my motivation to use in the glass. So I, I started using it like the end of 2017 and, um, yeah, just I had I was sitting on the thought for a couple of months and then I decided to finally pursue it and see if it was really something that I could do and if it was something that would actually enhance my artwork. And to my surprise, it did. And I was I was <laughs> happily surprised and shocked. Again, every time I create artwork, I'm always surprising myself. And I feel like, you know, I do it for that peace of mind too. And, you know, that broken glass and knowing that you can turn something broken into something beautiful and not, you know, just toss it away as waste was something I thought was very powerful and something I wanted to include in my art. Mm. And so I'm, I'm thinking about the works that you showed. Um, and I, I'm curious about Six Foot, which I thought was so beautiful. Um, was that your first digitized piece? Yes, it was. It was my first piece um, and my first piece that I put on the blockchain and everything. Um, I like. I feel like during this time, especially like late, to, um, the end of 2020, early 2021, um, within like the art community, there was a lot of talk about NFTs and digital art and um, being a fine artist um, and just seeing like how I could explore that type of art. Um, it just it just was kind of like a something I just felt like was a no brainer, but then also very complicated at the same time. So I was excited to, you know, dive into that. And I, it was really important for me to have both of the pieces, like the actual physical piece and the digital piece to be different, but still the same. So mm -hmm. um, I had a lot of fun creating that and, and um, creating those animations and adding those details within the um, the different platforms that I use to make it digital because I feel like like when you look at the two um, side by side, which I will be having um, at my upcoming show, I will have the physical piece and the digital and just comparing the two, I think it's just like really mind blowing to see like the imperfections that you may see in the actual physical piece, but with the digital, because, you know, you have that time to kind of like polish it and like go over it and to find, find, find detail, like to the pixel. I just, I really enjoy that process and I'm looking forward to creating more digital art. Amazing. And I'm, I'm, I'm also curious, you talked about um, viewing painting as a type of self-discovery. 
And you also mentioned taking a break between um, when you stopped painting, when you started painting again in around 2017. Um, I wonder what have you discovered about yourself through painting and what has that journey kind of looked like for you? Ooh, that's a really good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I started painting again in 2017 and during that time, it was a lot of changes that were happening in my life. I had just recently got married um, and not only like becoming a wife, but also, you know, marrying in, into like a whole new culture. Like I wasn't familiar with my roots and things like that. My husband is from West Africa, from Togo. And, you know, not really, you never really know a person until you're like living with them. So <laughs> being like in that environment, in this environment, it's just like, it was just so many different things I didn't know about me. And then even like with the culture, it just was like a lot of different changes that were going on. So when I turned back to painting because of that, I was able to kind of like rediscover who I am as a black woman and, and what that means. And then was like, um, also motivated to know more about my own roots and things like that and where I really come from. And, you know, I just felt like it was something that allowed me to breathe. Honestly, mm. it was something that allowed me to breathe because I felt like um, becoming a wife and like trying this language barrier, culture barrier, moved to a whole totally different area that I wasn't familiar with. It was just like so many changes and just needing, needing to like know who Simone was and what Simone liked to do. And then how is she like that person now, 10 years later? So I just felt like art really provided me with that escape and being able to kind of like rediscover who I am and also to grow and learn more about the things I didn't know and accept them. So that I feel like has shown in my artwork, especially like the artwork that is specifically designed for like my African collection. So I'm just so thankful mm. that I've had the opportunity and the experience and meeting my husband and motivating me to paint. Cause I don't know if I would be doing this if it wasn't for, for him, honestly. I love that. I love the idea of, you know, art as this grounding force within, within your life. I think that's amazing. And so I know, I see that there are a number of questions in the chat but I have um, one last question I wanted to ask you. Um, so I, I, it's a question I've been asking this year because the Phillips is celebrating its 100th anniversary this year. Um, we're entering a period of reflection and a period of charting our future. I'm curious, how do you want your work to be remembered in 100 years? And is there a work of art that you've already created that already tells that story? Wow. Thinking about a hundred years is like, wow. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm barely making it to 32 years um, in a couple of weeks. So it's like to think of a hundred years from now. Um, and being a young artist, like an emerging artist, I just feel like I'm still telling that story, I'm still trying to make sure that that story is being told how I want it to be told. So I couldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say that I already have a piece that kind of like tells that already because I'm still trying to see what that looks like for myself um, and still creating and painting every single day. And one thing that um, I can say is that in a hundred years, I hope that my art is even being spoken of. Um, that would just be an honor in itself and um, really, especially like right now like the art that I'm creating I just feel like it's really important and very powerful especially to showcase that black women are strong and resilient and powerful mm. despite anything that comes about and not only just black women but people in general we are so resilient like we're getting through this crazy time it's it's like a time that probably would never happen again not in the way that it's happened um thus far and I just think that that those works, the works that I'm currently creating and how it's reflecting that a hundred years from now, I feel like it will give people hope for whenever something else unpredictable happens, even if it's something small and knowing that as a, as a whole world, mm -hmm. we kind of conquered, because we're conquering this whole COVID situation and pandemic and how we was able to kind of overcome that. So I just want my work to kind of showcase that hope. And I, I feel like, that is being showed a little bit in each piece 
um, in a different way, starting with Beauty Mark, um, even with the blue in it piece with the bird um, and that relationship. And then all the way down to the six feet, I just feel like each piece shows a little bit about that. But because, you know, I'm still creating, I just feel like I know there's more to the story and something bigger. So I'm looking forward to seeing what that piece would look like though. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> me too <laughs> okay so i think camila is going to take over um and we're going to get into the q a yes thank you so much for that wonderful conversation um so if anyone still has any questions for simone just put them in the q a function um and i'll get into it so one of the questions is how do you see yourself in the larger art world there are so many different niches and different trajectories. Where do you see yourself fitting in? Um, that's a good question. Um, I see myself fitting in um, as an artist that is creating art depicting its time, like more so like in the contemporary space um, and maybe kind of like in like with modern art, I feel like, and, and you know, the Phillips being the first American museum of modern art, I just feel like that is where I see myself in the art world. Awesome, yeah. One of the attendees said that, I read in your bio that you've been inspired by Frida Kahlo. How has she inspired you? So with Frida, and it's, it's funny because it's like an artist that I typically teach my students um, with the with the art reach program that I teach at. And whenever we talk about Frida, I just always like to like I like my students to learn as well as, as something for me is that you can always is that it just goes back to that self discovery. Like Frida, she painted herself so many times, like. That's what she's known for, her self-portraits. And each portrait, she's showcasing a bit of herself and she's letting you know different elements about her, whether it's like the um, the flowers or the, the dragonflies or all the different elements that she has, like the monkeys and just all these different things that she adds to her portraits that, that express a different part of who she is. So I just felt like she was so brave and so um, not... It's, it's a way to explain it because like sometimes people feel like when you paint yourself over and over again, it's like vain, but it's a way that you can do it that also kind of like, and like teaches people about yourself. Cause like sometimes I feel like, again, as women, maybe we don't speak up for ourselves as much as we could because we're taught or we're told to not talk too loud and not to be so aggressive. Even if we just say one thing, people can take it the wrong way. But within a painting, especially a self-portrait, you can kind of put anything in there that represents this part of you. Like I'm currently working on a piece right now, a self-portrait of me that has lions in it. So, you know, just being able to add elements to a painting that talks about who you are without you having to talk about who you are and that's something that I really love about Frida. Absolutely yeah and I can totally see that inspiration in your work. Um, the next question is what collections will you be working on next if you know? So I'm currently working on building this collection um, and I feel like it's the overarching title for it is like the Black and Black collection. And within there, it's like these small like series. Um, and you have the social distancing series where you saw those three pieces that kind of speak to the social distancing and the pandemic. And then there's um, a series of like the golden series where it's, it has that strike. Because I have more pieces that have that gold element in it somewhere. So I'm working on that series of work within the Black and Black collection, as well as I know you see me. Um, and that is that that series of paintings will be showcased at my upcoming um, solo exhibition at the Art Reach in Washington, DC next month that I'm super excited about. Um, and yeah, so that's that's the one that I'm currently working on and looking to debut very, very soon, October the 15th to be exact. <laughs> And um, yeah, just that black on black element is the overall theme for everything though. Great, and do you wanna like tell us a little bit more about your upcoming show? Yes, so my upcoming show is called I Know You See Me. 
Um, and it is going to be featuring all of my black on black paintings, um, highlighting black women. But I do have a surprise because I will be having a few pieces that aren't women. So I'm excited for people to see that because, you know, I primarily paint women because it's just the thing that I identify with the most. But um, this show actually was supposed to happen in 2020. It was scheduled for not this particular show because, you know, back then it was a different body of work. Back then it was called, um, I believe it was called Broken Broken Beauty. And um, that was scheduled for March, Friday the 13th, 2020. But literally it was the same day that the whole <laughs> mandate for shutting down everything was announced. And um, I remember the art director called me probably the night prior and was like, you know, tomorrow's reception is going to have to be canceled. Um, so it was, it was, and that was going to be my first solo exhibition. I was so, so sad because again, when you get into a, a solo exhibition, you have, you can you kind of plan like six to eight months out in advance. So I have been planning for this show for eight months back in 2019, um, just for it to be canceled the day before the show, because I was very optimistic. I was very optimistic. I was like, oh, we're still going to have it. Yes, bring bring the champagne and bring the cheese. Like, we're still having it. But then it got it got shut down right the day before. So this is um, the return of Simone Agusoye at the Arc Reach um, Community Gallery. And I'm super excited. And this year, I'm coming even bigger and better. And it's going to be a two-month um, run for this exhibition from October the 6th to November the 26th. And the opening reception is October the 15th from five to eight. And I will be showcasing a, approximately 13 new pieces that are all based on that I Know You See Me concept. Wow, that's been a long time coming. That's really exciting. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. Um, and yeah, so we just have a couple minutes left, but in that vein, in your new collections, are there any other materials or techniques that you're eager to try? Um, like I mentioned with the, the piece, um, I know you see me, I want to, you know, include the fabric that I got from Togo and um, some of these pieces and really um, have that kind of pop out on the black and black. So that's something I'm, I'm looking to experiment with. But then every time I get to that stage of adding the fabric, I'm always like, actually, it's, it's done how it is. Like, this is finished. I don't need to, you know, do anymore. But I'm eager to, you know, test it out and explore it to see exactly how it will impact my artwork, especially within this collection of I Know You See Me, because then I feel like the fabric, because it's so rich and colorful that it could almost camouflage the figure and the woman. So I'm, I'm really excited to see how that's going to transpire. And then also combining the fabric with the glass is something too that I'm looking to do within this collection as well. So a lot of exploration, a lot of trying new things and seeing what will work. But the good thing is that it always works out. So. <laughs> I have faith. I'm optimistic about everything. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for answering all those questions. I know there's more, but um, I believe we're out of time. Can you all? Thank you, Simone. And thank you everyone for joining us. Um, this was a really wonderful talk and I'm, I'm glad we were able to hear from the people's choice. So Thank you, everyone, and have a great night. Thank you. Thank you for having me.